have you ever tried hot foiling on acetate? Well, if you haven't, in today's video, I'm going to show you just how to do that and how to turn it into a card. Hi everyone, I'm Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. Now let's jump into the project. I will be using the Hero Arts Peony Hot Foil Plate, which has this large, beautiful floral image that we are going to hot foil on acetate. Now I will be using these acetate sheets from Hero Arts. They are heat resistant. That is very important. If you have some acetate in your stash, check the packaging, find out if it is heat resistant, or if you're not sure, contact customer service because you need to make sure that it is heat resistant. Now I know that these are from Hero Arts. They are heat resistant. So that is why I'm using them today. I am taking some matte gold glimmer foil and I'm going to trim it to about the size of my hot foil plate. I am going to follow the exact process that I would foil on cardstock, starting by having my acetate on the bottom for my sandwich, my glimmer foil so it's pretty side up, and then my hot foil plate so it is the design side down. Now I went around the entire edge and I'm just really trimming off excess pieces. It might seem kind of tedious, but I personally like to tape my hot foil plate down to my substrate, whether it is cardstock or if it is the acetate. And I do that with my Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape. I always make sure that the tape is touching the plate, the foil, and the cardstock, or in this case, the acetate. Now off on the side, I have my Glimmer Hot Foil system warming up. Once it is hot enough, the green light is going to stay on. And then after I have everything taped in place, I'm going to flip this over so that the plate is touching my Glimmer system. Once I have that in place, I am going to hit that bottom button and it is going to blink. Once it turns a solid green, I know it is done warming up to its temperature that it needs. I'm going to remove that docking station and run it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. Now when removing your plate, you want to be careful because it is quite warm to the touch. So I am going to be super careful removing the tape and also the plate. Now I do want to note that that tape did not leave any type of residue or marking on my acetate. So here I'm removing the plate and then I can carefully peel up my glimmer foil and it foiled absolutely perfect. I have this gorgeous design and not a single mark where it missed any area, no over foiling. So now I have this clear window. What I want to do is create a frame for it. So I have some deluxe white cardstock here cut to four and a quarter by five and a half and the arches infinity die. I'm going to center that on my card front, hold it down with my tape and die cut this out to create that window. Now I can place this anywhere on that acetate sheet because I do have the entire design and that acetate is a little bit larger than a regular A2 size card front. I am going to line the back of that window with some double sided tape, remove the backing, and then I can place this wherever I want. So once I settle on the exact placement, I can just push my cardstock down to secure that double sided tape in place. Then I'm going to want to just take some scissors or your paper trimmer and trim off any of that excess. Now that our window is done, we can work on creating a background. So there's lots of ways you could do your background. You could leave, leave it as plain white cardstock, add maybe some colored cardstock to the background, or even create a shaker card. I decided to do some bright, bold ink blending. So once again, I have some deluxe white cardstock here that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I am going to start by ink blending Lemon Drop Reactive Ink. I started in that top right corner and went kind of maybe about halfway down. Then I'm going to come in with Taffy Reactive Ink. Now I started this a little bit away from the Lemon Drop so I could make sure to really have a bright pink in there and then also blend up into the Lemon Drop to create kind of that orange look in there. So when they overlap, they're going to create another color. Now it's going to look like a disaster here for a little while. When you're doing ink blending, it does take a little work and a little bit of going back and forth between the colors. 
Now here I'm coming in with Berry Smoothie down in that opposite corner and I'm gonna blend this up into the taffy. And you're gonna notice I do go back and forth between my colors quite often. If you are struggling with an ink blended background, either go over it some more to try and smooth out the blend or just walk away from it and let the inks dry. A lot of times when you let your inks dry, it's not gonna look so harsh and it'll smooth out uh, the blending and the transition between the colors. After I am happy with my results, because I used the reactive inks, they are going to react with water. So I sprayed a little bit of water down onto my work surface. I'm going to grab a paintbrush and I'm just going to flick that water all over my background. It's going to react and leave kind of these white speckles in the background, but not as bright of a white as I would have if I would have used paint. So I dabbed up the water with a paper towel and then I'm lining the back of my window panel with foam tape. Now I am just using the foam tape to help lift it and create some dimension on the front of my card, but you could very easily turn this into a shaker card. I decided not to do a shaker today because I really wanted that large foiled image to be the focal point. Now for a sentiment for the front of this card, I am using the Lemonade Day stamp set. It has some really pretty, just happy messages on there with coordinating dies. I really like this one that says sending happiness. So I'm inking it up in some black ink and I stamped it twice to make sure I had a really nice impression. Then I'm going to hold the coordinating die down with some low tack tape to die cut that out. And I also die cut out a few more so that I could layer it together to create dimension or you can use some foam squares or foam, uh, foam tape. Then I added liquid glue to the back of that and used my tweezers to place it on the front of the card, which you could see I was a little indecisive, but decided to go with that bottom right-hand corner. I am going to set something heavy on top of it to let that sit for a minute or two, and that will finish up the card project. So if you have not tried foiling on acetate yet, I highly recommend it. It is a stunning image on there and it gave me beautiful results. Just be sure to make sure it is heat resistant acetate. All of my supplies are listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thanks again and see you soon.